Welcome everyone to Rewind, Recap, Relive, where legends and rising stars meet. I'm your host, Jonah, and we are bringing you a fan Fantastic interview today with the Beast King, Chase Holiday, and wrestling legend, Ricky Morton. But first, let's get into next week's episode, which is a bit different, and I'm really excited to tell you about it, and the winner of the Ricky Morton t-shirt off of Pro Wrestling Tees. Let's get right into it. So you're all asking me, who is it? Who won the Ricky Morton t-shirt off of Pro Wrestling Tees? Well, I'm going to tell you. Mr. Jones, congratulations, you are the winner, and we will be in touch, and you will get that shirt. Congratulations. All right, so next week's episode, first and foremost, will not be releasing on a Thursday. Instead, it will be releasing on a Wednesday, because here in Times Square, we're going to be chomping down on some turkey, watching the virtual parade, and enjoying our Thanksgiving. But... You will not be left without content, of course, as I've promised, always producing content here on the channel on Rewind, Recap, Relive. So let me tell you what we got for you next week. It is a massive wrestling podcast slash YouTuber collaboration we've got hosted by the Circle of Debate podcast. We've also got Dirty Heels on there. We've got JoFo. We've got James 90s Wrestling Podcast. Making sure I don't miss anybody because you are not going to want to miss this episode. It is fantastic. I had so much fun doing this. It's over two hours of wrestling content, so make sure you tune in next Wednesday for that. We'll be releasing it here on the channel with all the links to all the great people who are involved down below in the description. Don't miss it. Everything is taken care of. We have talked about everything we need to. And make sure you do not miss me and all of those talented YouTubers and podcasters I mentioned before in that wrestling-infused, talent-infused collaboration Thanksgiving special, of course, hosted by Circle of Debate. We've got Joe Fu in the ring, Dirty Heels. We've got James with his 90 Years Wrestling podcast and myself. You're not going to want to miss it. Subscribe to Rewind Recap Relive, share it around, like the video, have a good time, and I'll see you soon. Our first guest is going on three years in the wrestling business. He's currently, he was actually trained at Black and Brave Academy with Seth Rollins. Uh, he's currently the keeper of the chain. Please welcome Beast King Chase Holiday. Hey, everybody. How we doing? What's up, Chase? What a good-looking kid. Where are you from, <laughs> oh, man? Thank you. I'm from California, uh, but I currently, California? Live in, uh, I currently live in Indiana, but yeah, I'm, I'm originally from California. What part of uh, Indiana yet? Uh, Indianapolis, uh, technically. Like, I live in Greenwood, but like the whole area, they just kind of count as Indianapolis. Yeah, I was just... Uh... In Indianapolis for Joy Janelli Spring Break. Thing. Yeah. Were you there? The collective, yeah, yeah, I was yeah, there. Yeah, I thought I remember seeing you there, man. Yeah. What's happening? <laughs> Not much. Yeah, just right. hanging out. Let me introduce uh, the legend now. He introduced himself a little bit, but wrestling for over four decades, still very active today. Nine time world tag team champion, one half of the Hall of Fame tag team, the Rock and Roll. Express. Please welcome Ricky Morton. All right. Thank right. you, man. I didn't know if you was going to set me up for something here. I thought maybe y'all might have started going, he sucks. He <laughs> sucks. No. But no, I Never. just, you know what, dude? I, at being 64 years old, being in this business all my life, I, I think I'm enjoying it better now than I ever did, especially with all the young talent. It's out in the yeah. country and meeting a man and trying to make them uh, understand what our business is about. Hey, as, as one of those young talents, we definitely, uh, me and my friends always get excited. We say, anytime we see you anywhere, we're like, heck yeah, man. We're about to see Ricky Moore and this man's still going. We we love it. It just gets us hyped. <laughs> Appreciate it, buddy. Appreciate it very much. Thank you so much, both of you, for being here. And I'd love to start, we started talking about what you're doing now, Ricky, but I'd love to go back to the beginning. And can you tell us just how it is that you actually got into the world of professional wrestling? Uh, you know, actually, I didn't want to be a wrestler. I was, uh, my dad was a professional wrestler and a referee. And the business hasn't changed uh, yet to what it is now. Uh, you know, my dad, he worked for Nick Goulas. Uh, you know, he worked for the Crockett's. He worked for the... Uh, the Welches and all of them in the Florida's territory and Eddie Graham in the Florida territory. But referee, but it, by the right time I was just getting into junior high school, my daddy was referee, but he, my dad's the one that pulled the ring too. 
set the ma- set the ring up for the matches. Yeah. So needless to say, I had four brothers, and that was our job too. Uh, we had to go help him. Uh, and at that time, and don't get me wrong, man, I, I would would never change it or trade it for anything. Uh, but you know, it's just something on what territory you was in. We had better talent. You know, Nick Gulas had the worst talent in the world. <laughs> And, and, you know, you wrestled in uh, armories where there's 30, 40 people. And a lot of these guys depended on it for a living. Uh, uh, Nick wasn't that great of a promoter. So, but, but, <laughs> yeah. but understand, it was just a time, you know, and I was in junior high school and I was missing out on it. And, and I played football in high school and I wrestled in high school. Uh, it, it took a, a lot away from me until I got, you know, right out of my senior year in high school. That's just when the business man was really, it hadn't peaked yet, but it was starting to. Uh, yeah, I'm like a squirrel. I'm jumping from tree limb to tree limb. <laughs> totally fine, kiddo yeah. that's listening to me. People always talk about uh, territories. And they asked me, do, you, do I wish territories would come back? And, and you got to listen to this and understand what I'm saying to you. You see, the territories are a slight bill lights, you know. Uh, Jerry Lawler, he owned Memphis Wrestling. You wasn't going to get over him. And it was like that. And then when you had a booker that pushed yourself, I mean, it was, uh, you didn't have no chance in this business. But I was coming along right in the business where it was changing, and Robert already became the, the Rock and Roll Express. We were in uh, in Memphis, and Bill Watts was retiring. And see that, and this is what I always tell you, and I hope the other kids listen to me real good too. Yeah, is our business has been at the right place at the right time. It don't matter how many Hurricane Coronas you can do. It don't matter <laughs> if you can do a Canadian destroyer off the top work. None of that really makes a shit. And I, and I, and it's hard to to understand it. You know, I have a son that's going to be a third generation, generation, and I'm trying to tell him, you know, let's start here on this path. Because if you watch our TV shows, hell, I don't know who's who. And I know a Paul because they all look alike. Mm-hmm. They do the same shit in their matches, same thing. Uh, and, and there's nothing different about them. You know, it, it's it's like being a rock star. I don't know if you, there's a lot of rock bands that were, especially the hair bands that were great and, and, and you guys that are great now. But you see what they did? It's like a wrestler in, in, in playing music. You've got to find your own sound. Mm-hmm. And when you find your own sound, you know, that's right. I mean, it's uh, like Mick Jagger. I love Mick Jagger. But see, his his way of singing, is, he's the only one that can do that. But really, I mean, w- would you like to see him sing the uh, the national anthem? He probably couldn't do it. But he had his own, own sound. And it's the same thing in the professional wrestling business. you got to have your own, your own way, your style that stands out different from everybody else. And I promise you, it's not about diving out of the, out of the ring on the floor. It's not about doing it. It's learning, and, I, and especially your, your young wrestlers have to be different. Learn how to start a match. Have you about five different ways that you can start a match? And, and this is hard because now, it's it's like my dad told me when I was breaking into business. Well, I'm trying to tell you now, I'll be better off trying to talk to that wall because it's going <laughs> to understand me better than you going to understand me. Uh, but it is. Sometimes in our business, it ain't what you do. It's what you don't do. And that's what the people look for. It, they don't look for, I mean, hell, go to India, uh, any independent show. And the guys ask me, uh, man, uh, Hey, did you watch my match? And I said, yeah. Did you watch the match before you? I, I No. I said, you need to because y'all did the same thing. The same match. <laughs> y'all just had yeah. all different color tights. And I'm serious. I mean, uh, okay, I jumped from that limb. Now I came back to this limb. Let's see where we're at now. <laughs> 
Chase, could I throw it to you? I'd love to get your thoughts on that. But first, tell us how it is that you got into wrestling. Uh, so I got into wrestling when I was uh, about 13 years old. And so, like, I got into it pretty late. And I just kind of, like, during the summers, uh, between of me going from, like, junior high school into high school, uh, there wasn't a lot on TV, like, on the Monday nights and, like, throughout the week. And so I would just be sitting there channel surfing, and then it was, like, Monday Night Raw, and da, 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 whatever, whatever. And I was like, okay, uh, I'll watch that, you know, whatever. Like, I knew what wrestling was, and I, like, I would, when I was younger, I would play games with my friends, so that's kind of all I knew. Like, I knew The Rock, and I knew Stone Cold, like, at the time when I was growing up, and, like, that was it. Uh, my dad had actually been to wrestling shows before, but, like, he never – once he got out of it he like never really introduced it to me but once I got into it he started like going more and more about it and was telling me about like what he grew up with Mm -hmm. but yeah I just started watching like Monday Night Raw and then of course on Monday Night Raw they're like oh watch Tuesday Night ECW and this this and that and these guys are going to be on and I was like okay well I guess I'll watch Tuesday Night ECW I'm not doing anything else and so I started watching Tuesday Night ECW. Next thing I know, they're like, and Friday Night SmackDown is coming on uh, this week, and this is what's happening. I was like, well, I guess I'll watch mm-hmm. SmackDown too. And next thing I know, I'm watching Monday, Tuesday, Friday every week. And then you I just find, got hooked, yeah. Yeah, I just find myself just not not watching. Like It just became rituals. Like Monday night at 9, I'm in my room or I'm in the living room and Raw's on. And at Tuesday at 8 or 9, and then Smack- on Friday at the same time that I found – uh impact like tna started coming on on thursdays and i found that and so i was watching wrestling monday tuesday thursday friday every week and so that's kind of that's kind of what i got like how i got into it and then i was just kind of like yeah i just i'm gonna be a wrestler and then i just never changed my mind i was like nope i want to do that and that's that's all i want to do so that's a great story yeah it really is do you have another job chase you have another job uh yes so i have like i currently work for starbucks because okay. like that's I have like I work between like other jobs and stuff like that to help so I can put the gas in my car so I can continue to be yeah. a wrestler and continue to do that. Type well, yeah, of stuff let that me I ask you this. Do. Let me ask you this. Where you train at? I'm, I'm not talking about weights. Where you train at the ring? Uh, so out here there are a couple places. Uh, there used to be a building that we went to, uh, but we don't go there anymore. It was like 30 minutes from here. But there's uh, a ring. That is two hours from me. That's close to Kentucky. There's uh, there's one other place, but I don't remember exactly where it's at. And there's another one in a place called Terre Haute. Uh, that's also an hour away from me. So yeah. whenever we are able to get around to those, we can. We kind of we'll roll around, we'll train, we'll kind of share like other things that we've learned and stuff like that, or like other things that we've watched or picked up from other people. Uh, yeah. There's like there's our like. They're a bit of a drive, but whenever we can and are able to, we make sure to, like, try to get in when we can. Yeah. Now, this is what I want to tell you, son, and I want you to listen to me. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Listen to me to see our business. Yes, sir. It don't come to you. Right. You have to go go get it. Yes, sir. Uh, Sometimes you have to sacrifice a lot, you know, and it's like when I broke into business, even though my dad works small territory, guys, you don't even realize when – you, you drive as far and you make $5 <laughs> and I'm serious. And I understand the same way that you do. Uh, sometimes it's uh, easy. I love for you to one day, if you, if you're in the Tennessee, East Tennessee area, I have a live, I have a right to school, school Morton. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. It's I, I'm alive on YouTube every, every uh, Sunday at five Oh five Eastern time. We, uh, I have a live show and uh, I have a lot of kids that show up there, but you know, and, and for people being there, it's, and it's not the part It's about the part that my TV would give you exposure. I have a lot of guys that come on and, and, and trust me, son, I had a lot of people watch my show that you don't realize trying to get ideas for other things, but I do the old school thing. And, uh, and, and I will promise you this on the independent being a baby face, or be in a heel. Uh, see, people are, you know, they're set one way, one program. They, they do, you know, if you watch a Monday Night Raw, you're going to see that match on the independent show come Saturday night. Mm-hmm. But if you go like that, 
See, like to me, if I was watching you wrestle, and I and I and I see you do a headlock routine, you know what a headlock routine is, son? Just a headlock so, routine. Keep going back like to the, the headlock. Oh yeah. Keep going back to the headlock. It, no matter what you do, you see, that's what people recognize. Because I'm telling you, I'm 64 years old. I can still leap for all drop kick. So, what the hell? You, do yeah. you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. But there's only very few that know how to work. And, right. and, and working it, it's not, it's not the part uh, bit. You see, I know you're young, and you got a lot of your young buddies, and you're out there on the road, and you're trying to find this business. You're trying to learn it. You're trying to understand it, and everybody's got their opinion. But, but, but when you're on the independent circuit, you, you, you have to change yourself a little bit. You have to right. uh, do something that people don't expect. Uh, have you met Luscious Lawrence? I have uh, not. From OVW. You know who I'm talking about? It sounds familiar. Like, I'm sure I'm... Uh, Good looking I'm redheaded sure. boy. But, you know, he wrestles for uh, OVW for Al. He, yeah. he, he came from my school there. And if you could just watch him, he... Uh, that's how he got his job. He went to the mm -hmm. rig instead of doing all the other stuff. He grabbed a wrestling hoax and started working the wrestling hoax. You see, and you, do you understand me? It, yeah. it blew 20 people's minds because yeah. he just didn't do shit that was unnecessary. And I come from the old school. I'm a part of selling, you know? I mean, Jesus Christ. And I, and I tell these kids, I say, listen, guys, I can sell one punch better than I can 47. Right. I could sell one kick better than I can, 47. Uh, why don't we start to match off slow and build it? That's what sells tickets in our business. And it is to work it up to the end. Because a lot of times, you know, nowadays watching wrestling is like watching tennis. I'm serious. You know, you're sitting there watching a wrestling match. <laughs> and you don't know what the hell they're doing. All yeah. right. Okay. All right. I, I don't know where I went with that one, but we went there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got there. Yeah. Um, Chase, so I'd love to, yeah, I'd love to get your thoughts on that. Also, so you trained with uh, Seth Rollins, right? Um, at Black yes, and Brave correct. Academy. How did, how was that experience? Because we haven't had somebody on who's trained with somebody who's currently on, you know, the active roster. He's a very talented performer. So how was that for you training with uh, somebody like that? Uh, it was it was an experience. I that was probably, I mean, I always say that I would absolutely go back and like, let, do that part of my life again. Uh, yeah. That three months, that training and being around, you know, one of the people that are like one of the best in our business, and that is like, especially going forward today, uh, somebody that's also inspired many like uh, people of my uh, age group and generation that kind of like watched him get to where he was at, and just being around him, he's very he's very giving. He's very like. Uh, like I'm very thankful to be able to reach out to him whenever I can to ask for little things. Like I messaged him, I think maybe last week and I was like, Hey, where would you suggest I could get some, uh, some good like wrist wraps for the gym or like knee wraps or whatever. He's like, Oh, go here, this, this and that. And like, we've talked about uh, like meal prepping stuff, like uh, trifecta, like sense and meals, I believe is who, and stuff like that. So like, I'm very thankful that I have somebody that I trained with somebody like that, who was like, Hey guys, this is, I'm going to teach you everything that I learned. And like, uh, I'll tell you what I was like, what was passed on to me. And he was like, and even to this day, like one thing you'll know and like you'll learn in wrestling is that you like, you never stop learning. Like there's always something that like somebody else can teach you or that somebody else before you can teach you and stuff like that. Like you're always learning. So it's like, you, nobody ever knows everything basically is like, just always be open, like, you know, open ears, make sure you listen to everybody. Cause there's always something that can be, you know, taught to you. And so I'm very thankful to have trained with somebody like that and to be around him and absorb his knowledge and his experiences to help me to start my wrestling journey and to hopefully uh, take that as far as I possibly can. So, you know what, dude, that was a great answer because I yeah. wanted to tell you, I was, you know, earlier when I was talking, um, I go into my wrestling screw three times a week and I always, and I've been doing this for 46 years. I always learn something new when I go in there and I'm serious and I'm not, uh, uh, I'm not just saying this and blowing smoke, but you do what, what people in our business. And, and I want you to understand that when they think they know everything, they don't know shit. 
And, and yeah. I'm serious. Uh, they don't. They're, they're, just, they're the ones you need to walk away from. But the ones that are willing to really help you to make you understand what they're talking about. That's yeah. the ones you want to stick with. Yeah. You know, it's just little things that I learned. Uh, it's, this is the greatest business in the world, but you, but you got to dedicate 100% of your time to it. You know, Chase Owens is one of the guys that, that came out of my school. You know Chase? He yes. works for New Japan. Yes, sir. Chase is the same way, buddy. He worked he, his job. He had to be at work at 3 o'clock in the morning. He worked at Federal Express. So it gave him good time to work his shows and drive all the way back home and go to work to be at working time. He goes straight into work, you know, and it was the craziest thing in the world. But see, that's, and, and what I was telling you earlier, it's being at the right place at the right time and being prepared. See, this is the biggest thing, is being prepared to whatever they throw at you that you can do. Right. And, and I'm serious, without saying, huh, you, you understand what I'm saying? Hey, come yes, here, Hank. You think you might be able to do this? And you, say, yes, sir. I sure can. Thank you. Without asking any questions. Right. That's how you get a job in our business. Right. You know, and I uh, see a lot of guys like that all the time. I go to lock up. I said, lock up, huh? What? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what? What? Okay. But uh, but it's good, man. Uh, I wish you all the best, son. I, I would love for you to come down to my school so if you're in East Tennessee sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I, to, I would you love to come to in, that. and uh, it's if you get a chance at the Wagwan well, or School of Morton YouTube, you can pull the show up. I ha we have some great talent in there, and a lot of talent shows up just like you. Uh, they just wanting to be on my TV show and see me. I put you on there, <laughs> okay? <laughs> and I do. I put you on there. If you, I mean, it's not that. Uh, I don't. Uh, come in here, charge you a certain amount of that right there. I, I'll let you get in the ring. And then if you're capable enough of being on my TV show, hell, you might be my event. Oh, and I'm not bullshitting you. That's what it's about. My school is for you guys. Right. And it's for you guys. I have people that come from California. I had a guy there from California Sunday. I had a, you know, they come from Florida. They come from everywhere and they, and they really do good. You know, and trust me, son, a lot of people watched them. A lot of people commented on them. Okay. And that's just uh, all I'm saying to you. Yeah, you know, no, I can't, I can't promise you nothing, but I can promise you people are watching it. And, you know, like, I'm, and we go back to what I was saying, our business has been at the right place at the right time. Yeah. yeah absolutely. That's all. That's, that's all. Always, that's always it's what it's about. Yeah. Being, yes. being exactly where you need to be. Uh, like yeah. how you say the right place, the right time. And that's like, no, you never know who's watching no matter where you're at. Like, I think a lot of people forget that. Like, when they just go to their shows, like, oh, nobody's watching. It's like, no, like, there's always there's always somebody. Like, you may not hey. know, but, like, this guy knows this guy knows that guy. Yeah, but, but look up in the audience. You see them phones filming all the time, bro. Yeah, you never, exactly. You never know, you never know what that, film, that phone's filming for. And I, yeah. I'm serious. It's okay. a really good point, yeah. Seriously, and... Ricky, another thing, sticking to what you've been doing recently, a match that everyone was talking about was your match with uh, Joey Janela. Can you talk about how that match was for you um, and how you felt about that, how, how you uh, re developed that relationship with Joey? Well, you know, uh, this, the younger generation of our business, and, 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 and never, and please, guys, anybody ever – Never judge anybody from somebody else's opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, just because somebody else, I think Joey is one of the phenomenal workers in the world. It's not, you know, maybe he don't have the legs of everybody, but buddy, he's absolutely, and, and the way I got this with Joey, it, it, and it's just the part about, I'm Ricky Morton, I take my time with people. Uh, Joey gave me a, 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 an opportunity, and I and I watched Joey. I watched, you know, uh, a lot of, the, and I know what he was capable of doing. It, but you see, and I told Joey this before or my just as Joey, you know how to work. Either you can make me look like I'm 18, or you can make me look like I'm 64 when I get in the ring. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Yes. You see, uh a lot of the things wasn't me, and I'm not going to take credit for it. It was Joey. Uh, Joey is 
one of the top workers in this business. And, I, and, and, and it's not about the things that he does, it's the things that he don't do. And it's the things he does on the right time. And uh, I know that he's not, <laughs> that some of the people are just not the shit out of him. But you see, the ones that do don't really know him. Uh, mm-hmm. I do really know him. Joey's, uh, you know, Joey's from, uh, from New Jersey. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> They're different people. Yeah. You know, I hear him and Enzo fight all the time, but you know, believe it or not, <laughs> they're good friends. I you believe know, that, just, yeah. And they are. I mean, it's just like people don't understand. And, and and I'm going here too, and I'm taking a step out. I don't want you to think that I'll be a bad because one of the greatest guys in this business that I love more than anybody else is Jimmy Cornette. Mm-hmm. I, I made a lot of money with Jimmy Cornette in the Midnight Express. But guys, you got to stop and understand that a lot of people out there that are listening to this, Jimmy Cornette <laughs> didn't own the territories. Okay, <laughs> Jimmy Cornette, uh, I mean, he's been fired from every one of them. Okay, he <laughs> don't have the answer to everything. And when he knocks somebody, you don't got to listen to it. Yeah. All right, I mean, I, I love Jimmy. I love his opinions. I love sometimes. But sometimes he goes overboard. And I can understand that because I was at the time of kayfabe, brother. You didn't even get your finish till you got in the ring. <laughs> yeah. See, I was in that time. You didn't see the, the wrestler go over every move in your match. You didn't do none of that. But, dude, the, it's as the world keeps turning, it, you know, things change, and you have to go with the change. And if you don't, you're going to be an old sourpuss that's on a damn podcast every day <laughs> that has nothing good to say about nobody. You know, and, and that's what really tricks me off. You know, it's it was something down there before, too, about what he said. But you got to understand, Jimmy Cornette wasn't in every meeting. Jimmy Cornette wasn't in there talking to people. Jimmy Cornette, Jimmy Cornette only has his own opinion, okay? Right. And your opinion is like your ass. Everybody's got one. <laughs> okay? So, and that, and, that, and, so and that's true, all. yeah. So, I mean, but me saying this, don't think that I'm being a – uh, smart so don't worry about what people like that say don't worry and this is my greatest thing in the world to you son never be afraid to be afraid and it's hard to even understand what i just said then i have a lot of guys that, that get on the you know they get much and they had the greatest matches then when they roll out on the floor to do an interview they freeze up right and this is what i mean dude Opportunity only comes every now and then, and you got to be so, ready. So don't. It, it, it's just it's a big thing now. Don't ever be afraid to be afraid. Yeah. You don't don't care. I mean, cause you're not out there doing an interview for your friends back there. And another yeah. thing that if you ever want to, uh, and if you don't believe a lot of things that I say about matches, and you do the same thing, uh, I want you to do this for me. The next match you have, you look at that. You listen to me. Yes, sir. Next time you have a match and you go to a building, I want you to go out and have a match. And then when you get through, I don't want you to come back and ask the boys, how was my match? I don't want you to ask your girlfriend. I don't want you to ask anybody. I want you to go out in the crowd and find somebody that you don't know. And you ask them, do they watch your match? Okay. And you know what, yes, kind of, you know what they're going to tell you? Hmm. All they got to remember is the finish who won and who lost. And that's how you put asses in our uh, seats at the arenas every week. It's when you, when you learn how to do that, that's called storytelling. It's me being a baby face all my life, nine time world tag team champion. Who gives a shit? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I never wanted to be a champion. And the reason why is because when you're a baby face, you have to chase the hills for the belts for the people to come in and buy tickets. They don't buy a ticket to watch you lose. Right. They buy a ticket to watch you win. But the heel always right. screws you. That's why you always put the belts on the hills. Yeah. And you always chase them. Then finally, when you do win it, they get the heat right back on you. <coughs> you drop it to another hill, then you chase it. And that's how you put asses in seats in our building. And and I don't care what anybody says. It still works. I do it every week at the school of Morton. I have to turn <laughs> people away down there uh, because I have. So uh, a couple of weeks ago, I, I'm live on YouTube. And I had to go off the air because Mark's hit the ring. Uh, 
because the hills had so much heat. I had to go out there and stop it and Man. turn bipolar on everybody in the Really? Building, you know? Oh, oh yes. my God. I mean, That's crazy. Wow. You know, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, it, but see, everybody thinks, oh, in wrestling. No, it's not. No, it's not. You have that moment. You hear me? Mm -hmm. What I'm trying to say is during that match and during that moment, if you can get the people caught up in that match, you're doing a hell of a job, son. Right. Now, when it's over, they might sit back and think about it. But see, that's it. Me, when I was selling, if I'm, if I'm in a ring with Arn Anderson and I'm selling for him, and it's not me coming up doing comebacks, it's not me doing that. If Arn asks this to me, Ricky, are you all right? He thinks I'm hurt. Right. What do you think the guy on the front row is saying? Yeah. Okay. No, yeah. no, 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 no. That's, what do you think that bad, that guy way up there at the top of that balcony is thinking? <laughs> They're killing that son of a bitch. Yeah. You yeah. see? And that's the way it is. And then when I made a comeback, I didn't make a big comeback like I was a Superman. I throw one punch, I throw two punch. Hell, the third one I miss and fall on my ass and all goes back. You say, eat back on me yet. You see, I right. try to convince that it's real. And that's where our business is missing out, but it takes years and years of training and practice and, uh, and doing that. And I just, uh, man, I'm sitting here talking to y'all and I'm going, uh, you just don't even understand how much I love my business. Uh, you don't understand that I'm 64 years old and I'm going to have to hang my boots up. It's the hardest thing in the world to do, son, especially when you still love what you do. And especially when you have kids like you that want to learn. You see, man, that, that makes you want to get up out of bed. That makes you want to get to the gym. It makes you want to get there. But but you don't want to get in there with a guy that thinks he knows everything and go back to what I said a while ago. Really, dude, you don't know shit. And I'm right. serious. That's the way you learn our business. That was really, really well said, Ricky. It's I know you could definitely see it radiating off you, the love for the business. It's really inspiring for a lot of people, I'm sure. And Chase, I want to throw it over to you now and talk about some matches that you're fond of of your career so far. Uh, what, what ones can you look back on and you're proud of? You said you did that right. You're very happy with the outcome. Let's hear it. Uh, probably one of my first ones that comes to mind is probably my most recent one that I had at the Collective for the uh, Paradigms, uh, Trap Soul. We were on like Sunday or Sunday, technically Monday morning because we started at like midnight. Uh, and it was my match with Sonico, and it was uh, it was just one we didn't do. At least I don't I don't feel like we did necessarily a lot. It was uh, more of more of like a fight than like anything else. So it was that's how we like approached it, and that's how we went about it. It was it was more of a fight. I think we honestly maybe did one actual move towards each other, but it was uh, more of like a drawn not drawn out, but like. It was a down and dirty like type fight. Uh, There's also a triple threat I had at Paradigm, where I was a fan of the the story that had was essentially coming full circle between me and another wrestler, Lee Moriarty, and Cole Ratchet was also involved. That triple threat, uh, we all try to tell our stories between the three of us and what we were looking for in the match. Like I was looking for payback on Lee for something he did to me, and I also wanted Cole to prove something to me in the same match. So we were all like, we all played our parts and uh, within telling that story. So things like that, where we get to, where we try to tell our story and put it out and show people via like when we can with like our promos to build up our match is like, this is how we, how we individually as wrestlers and as, as characters or whatever feel about going into the, uh, that match that day at the show and being able to, let people also see that and hope it like it comes to fruition physically during our altercation in the ring and have people understand like to like just be able to translate that to people is like this is the story that we try to tell beforehand and now this is the story we're telling in the ring this you know just in a different way and just being able to get those things across in in those matches and hopefully for more to come is that's really what it's about is telling the stories with my with other wrestlers and other people is like there's always a motivation going to a new match for something like what's my motivation against this person or that person and that is i try to portray that as best i can before we get there, because in indie wrestling, we don't necessarily 
have the the great pleasure of having you know weekly uh or monthly like feuds and shows and stuff like that so it's not like uh like some places are able to put on like great stories but like and we have to do the product like they have people that do the productions and the videos for them but like as indie wrestlers we have to create the story even if it's like just a one-off match ourselves and i enjoy being able to portray that and send it out to people that are watching it as a part of something that i'm involved in so they know like what I'm looking forward to in the story going into the match. And hopefully my opponent is doing the same in return so they can see what we're building towards up to the day of where we actually meet our conflict. So the stuff like that and things like that are things right. that I'm, I'm a fan of is being able to have those stories told and like the little, the little things and stuff like that. So I, I really love both of the answers from both of you, honestly, the really well thought out, well said, um, Ricky, to go back to something you said earlier about how you really evoke that, that sympathy from the crowd, some uh, heels I thought that you really got over well were in Smoky Mountain Wrestling, New Jack and Mustafa. Remember working with them, getting them over as heels? Can, yeah. can you talk about that yeah, a little I, bit? I, I, <laughs> I don't think you could, could forget how it. Could but, I ever, yeah. How could I forget that? Uh, and New Jack and Mustafa, you know, they were young guys, kids that just come in from Atlanta, Georgia, uh, and to be in our wrestling business. And and people out here, please don't take this wrong. Please, not, not in uh, no point or fashion. You know, Smoky Mountain is, you know, you're in the South. You're up in the mountains. You're up in the, here, we, you know, we got TV programs that come into their living rooms every Saturday morning. Uh, at that time, it's when Rodney King just got uh, Rodney King on TV. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, New Jack and Mustafa did that to me on TV, uh, it was a uh, it, it's, it's, it's same way. And it's it's to watch uh, New Jack how how he grew in the business, and, and you know, and him coming from Atlanta and you know these country folks, and 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 how I had to set him down and talk to him a bunch of times. That listen, dude, we're, we're you know, I want you to really because our business up in the mountains thirty years ago was really different, you know. And he's getting mad at the crowd because of some of the racial slurs they're saying. And I can understand that, but you got to understand you're not dealing with the most, you know, when you're up, I mean, 60 miles from any kind of civilization and you're in these places, people are going to say that, you know, and I told yeah. him, I said, dude, go out there and look. I said, what has three teeth and 40 legs? <laughs> he said, what are you talking about? I said, the front row of matching. The, the, uh, the, the front row of the wrestling match. Don't go out. Don't worry about what these people are saying to you because they don't know. When they are saying that, dude, you're getting heat. Yeah, you did. And, 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 and later on in life, he seen New Jack. He come to me and talked to me about that. He says one of the, the greatest educations that he ever got in his life uh, was doing that because, you know, uh, you're not dealing with the same people that you're dealing with in Atlanta. You're not dealing with the same people you do in California, New York. Dude, you're up at, you know, Smoky Mountain, bro. We're down here in the heartland of, of the bad people. You hear me? And, uh, yeah, I, uh, but New Jack and stuff, we did a lot of things with them. And I, and I hope that that paved the road for New Jack to, uh, to be, you know, I'm going to be with New Jack the 21st this month. Uh, right here in my hometown, we have a show here, a big show coming up here. New Jack will be on it, James L. Worth, myself, uh, the oh, Ella wow. Rosa, a lot of them. It's going to be a hell of a big show here in town. And really, I, I can't wait to see New Jack. He, uh, you know, he comes by, he used to come by and see me all the time. I wanted to bet you that day he had pulled in my driveway. <laughs> he always <laughs> does. I uh, absolutely, oh, New awesome. Jack became a great friend of mine. That's and, really cool and to speaking hear. speaking of New Jack, spe speaking of New Jack, and it made me think of something. And I just wanted to uh, to tell you, especially, Chase, if you stay in this business, you're going to meet a lot of people. A lot of I grew up with a lot of people in this business. And, and we did. Bobby Eaton, Dennis Condry, Stan uh, Lane. You see, we worked territories together. And we all grew up together. And and the reason why, uh, you'll see. If you stay at ISIS, the guys that you work with now, really, 
and basically that they'll be your family. Uh, yeah. And, and I'm serious. Yeah, I mean, they'll be your family. So I, and, you know, yeah. and just don't throw it out the window. I always have the opportunity every day to let them know, and I do. It's like me and Robert. I've been mean, Robert. Me, Robert and I have been together 38 years. Uh, somebody asked me. I, I said I'm with him more than my wife, and I don't even like her either. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, but I'm. Just, <laughs> I, uh, no, but. You know, we we spent a lot of time together. So that's the most important thing uh, that you're going to have to learn on the road, especially when you if you get a break and you're on the road, you with you know, you with the right. boys every day, you with the same people right. every day, every day, every day. You got to learn how to work through it. Yes, sir. You hear me? Uh, and it's hard to understand sometimes what I'm saying, but sometimes you get tired of somebody. Just, same, the same routine every day, but you gotta mix it up. Yeah, uh, you know, me and Robert it had not always been cookies and cream, but you know what? Uh, he became my family, and he and he did. You know, I, I me him talk every day. Right. <laughs> Even I, you know, oh yes, he called me every day, or I call him. If he hadn't heard from me, he will call me. If I hadn't heard from him, I call him. So. Uh, that's one good thing about our business that I love because of the, the fact that we are, we are a different breed mm-hmm. and, and, you know, and, and you stop the thing, dude, uh, look at some of the crazy shit we do and be coming yeah. off the top ropes out on the ground and floors and stuff. And, you know, it's a special breed of people that can do that and, and learn how to do that. Right. I was just saying every show that like I, uh, I go to and like whenever I get ready to leave, I make sure to find, you know, every every single one of my friends, everybody that was there, everybody that helped with the show, and just in general, even some of like the regular yes. fans that come through, I make sure like, hey, thank you for coming. I'm glad I got to see you. Like, get home safe. You know, I love you. Like, uh-huh. take care. Like, every time, like I make sure, like, all right, I got everybody. I get people two or three times before I leave the show. I'll have my car you- packed and ready to go. But I'll be, oh, I'll be yeah, hugging yeah. people for three times or like, we say bye. And they're like, yeah. I'm like, all right, well, I'm going to say bye again. Like, I love you. Get home safe. Like, oh, yeah, it's all right. You, did you, at Joey Janela's show, did you see the big Samoan kid uh, that came in from California? Juicy? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Now, did, did I tell you the story about Juicy? Uh, you did not. I'm the one that got him booked. But I didn't get oh. him booked. But there, because I, I just met him. Mm-hmm. And, uh. I just, and he told me his story. So, uh, you know, I tweeted it on my, uh, on my phone. I tweeted on it. You talking about dedication to this business. This guy worked a 12 hour shift, got right off work, went straight to the airport, flew six hours to here, got off here and came straight to the wrestling building just to see if he could be part of the ring crew, not to wrestle to put the ring up. You see what I'm saying? And I tweeted that the next day I know he had a match. I thought it was the coolest stuff in the world, you see? And that's called dedication. And don't think people don't look at that and understand that. Uh, uh, and it, and it, I never seen, it was, he was like a kid Christmas morning. And see, that's a feeling in your heart and in your body. That no, nothing can replace that with a feeling right. like that and to help somebody like that. Who knows? Right. This kid here might be the next big deal. You never know. Whoever thought that Jimmy Cornette would be as big in the business as he did. See, because I knew Jimmy way before he got in the wrestling business. He was a pitcher right. taker around the ring. I hated him. I kicked him, <laughs> trying to kick him off of the ring and, and uh, uh, all that stuff. I mean, he was an asshole then, too. Uh, so, but, but I, <laughs> but don't get me wrong. I love Jimmy. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry if I'm getting too close to the TV screen. Here. No, it's okay. I, I'm saying, God, I got a big nose. No, but go ahead. <laughs> man. Um, I was going to go to, to chase now and say, um, for you, are there any dream matches out there for you that you wish you could have in the future? Uh, so there's always, uh, people that I look up to that, like, in, inspired me in some sort of way and uh ach is one of them uh eddie kingston is also one of my favorites 
And uh, for, like the top of my list, whenever I get asked, like, oh yeah, who your like who are some of your dream matches or like people you like to wrestle, it's always ACH, Freddie A. High, Eddie Kingston are always my my top three. Like those are those guys. I always uh, two of them really inspired me. One of them I I just instantly fell in love with once I really started getting into to indie wrestling. Uh, but those those guys are some matches I would definitely love to have sometime in my future. And you think you'd work well with their style from what you've seen? You think you guys would put on a Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Very much so, yeah. It's more about it's more about the stories, uh, than anything that we'd be able to tell. Like obviously the wrestling, I believe we'd have great matches with all of them because they're all also fantastic wrestlers. But the yeah. stories the stories of it all and like what we'd be able to put on is what I look forward to the most in that aspect. Absolutely. Ricky, have you ever worked with any of the men he just mentioned? Eddie Kingston. Eddie Kingston, good friend of mine. Yeah? (laughs) Yeah, I said he's a good friend of mine. Sure is. All the guys are. Uh, Really, uh, I really, uh, you know, Eddie, not only is he a great worker, but he's great behind the scenes. I don't know if if you understand this. Eddie. I've shared a couple of locker rooms with him. Oh, yeah. He's He's fantastic. He help you with your match. And, And don't think, see, Eddie's like me. Even though you don't think I do, I watch Eddie. And I do. I watch everything. You don't got to tell me to watch your match because I go watch it. If it's good, I stay out and watch it. If it ain't, I'll walk back in the dressing room. And I, I tell you the truth, and Eddie's the same way. Uh, uh, you know, I like, uh, you know, I work a lot of different companies with Eddie. Uh, and, and, you know, and, and being 64 years old, I guess I, I've earned, you know, before the pandemic, I think in one year, Robert Wild worked for all the top wrestling companies <laughs> there <laughs> were at it. But it's cool though, because it's it's not the point that this or they're mad about this. I, and I guess they still respect us and the boys respect us. Uh, Eddie is a, a part, but you know, guys, they, and they, now you got to stop and go back here uh, 30 years ago. And you're talking about matches that you get, you see, I, I had the opportunity to do mine. I uh, did the, uh, the Rock and Roll Express, which I wrestled with some of the greatest workers ever in this business. And and I can't pick somebody who's the greatest guy you've been in the ring with. And I can't pick one because mm-hmm. everybody was great. They just had their. But what I'm trying to tell you is, and it's what we go back to earlier. Everybody had their own different style. Their body was different. You see, what made a good what makes a good baby face is that you can work with any heel and not change the heel style. So that's that's called working. You right. know, that's that's understand. That's what made me good. But I had the opportunity to, and uh, and I say this, and and I mean it from my heart. Uh, the greatest world champion that ever was this is Nature Boy Ric Flair. Uh, I had one of the greatest runs with him in this business ever. Uh, yeah. Being, uh, and it's one thing that I learned from Rick, and I still, but I'm older now, and it's hard. And, and it's like when I work with Joy, of it, and I had to give the people the money's worth, and I learned that from Ricky. It's no matter if you work Rick Flair, if you didn't go an hour time limit, you went 59 minutes in a match. And I, and I'm serious. That was every night. And God <laughs> and man, did I? I mean, but you see, it really blew my mind. Because when Ric Flair, you paid a ticket to see Ric Flair, he made sure you got your money's worth. And that was one of the greatest lessons I ever learned in this business. Even as to now, you know, sometimes I get in the arena, so Ricky Morton, you didn't do nothing. Well, can I give you a little secret, son, and it's not being disrespectful, but the guys wrestling can't do nothing. He don't have a clue what I'm talking about in the ring. He needs right. to go to like, to a wrestling school, so I'm not going to take a chance on getting hurt. You know, right. I'm just going to show this. But if you notice, if I have somebody in the ring that can work, we tear the house down. I mean, look yes, at sir. Santana and Otez. Look at them, man. Yeah. I didn't know these guys from nobody. And people, <laughs> and the same thing, we wrestle them in, in New York. This is before they signed with AEW and, and – uh, AWE or whatever. Hell, I get them all mixed up. Uh, but I just, uh, he told me, he says, and they, you know, he's 
got me in a corner and he said, you're going to do a spot. My partner's going to cover Robert, come off him and Sunset Libby and hold on. Well, I don't know if you watch the thing, but here I go. I hit him and we, you know, it, it did the Canadian destroyer for the first time. And the people went crazy. And I, it, but <laughs> I knew when I hit him with it and I stood up, I didn't know what it was. Watch the tape. I raise up and I go, what the f was that? And, uh, <laughs> and the people were going, oh, I was. I said, look at, look at my boy. I said, well, what the f was that? Man, what did we just do? And <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what makes a good worker. These guys are great. Not only did I adjust myself to them, but they adjusted their self to us. Mm -hmm. and, and it's the first time I ever met them in my life. And we absolutely, uh, that's when Joey, Janela really got to liking me because he told me, he said, I mean, you still dive out of the ring and do stuff. <laughs> he goes, I like that. You know, I said, well, and, I, and we became good friends after that. But uh, always remember that. That's, that's what makes a good worker is that you can adjust yourself. See, I can work with Bobby Eaton, but I have to change my whole match when I step in the ring with that doodle in the butcher. You oh, see? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> you got to change yeah. your whole thing. And don't ever be afraid. You know what? And you go back and our business is changing. It's going back, guys. Our business makes a circle because what else are you going to do? I mean, right. you know, next week they're probably going to sh shoot somebody out of a cannon. But you know what? He's going to, but he's going to kick out on one. Right. And, and, yeah. And I'm, and I'm serious. You look at some of your greatest people in this business that drew money. All of them were the greatest workers in the world. But mm -hmm. one other thing that they could really do great was sell. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the sale. It's not about getting your stuff in. Look at Hulk Hogan. Hulk Hogan, don't get me wrong, but it's too, it was, he was over. But he wasn't the greatest worker in the world. But boy, when they got the heat on him and he ripped that shirt off, the whole not the building, but the whole damn town went crazy. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's what our business is about, man. And that, that's great things. It's a lost art. Uh, since I really love for you to come down and see me sometimes. Uh, uh, yeah, when this is over, ask Tim to get set my, uh, get my number and my social media. And, you know, and everybody out yeah. there is I mean, get a chance to every Sunday Eastern time, 505 on School of Morton YouTube. Uh, I won't be there this weekend. I got to, I'm up in, but I still have my show. It's already laid out, ready to go. Uh, in an old building, right. we have everything, production rooms. We get all that stuff, interview rooms. We uh, do it all. I'm up in uh, New Jersey all weekend. So, uh, but still loving what I do. But get a chance, man, check it out. And if you want to, I'd love for you to come down just one day. That way I can put you in a ring. And I, and I promise, promise you, I mean, it's a it's part about, it's just a part of getting some knowledge from somebody different. Right. Uh, I always encourage my kids to go to different wrestling schools, uh, you know, because we teach the same, see, you could teach the same thing, but, but somebody might do it a little different, but it's still the same thing. Right. And, and sometimes the way he teach, you might work better for you. You see what I'm saying? It's not right. certain. Yeah, that, was, that was the thing Seth also told us. It's the greatest thing that's ever going to happen to you, kid. And uh, I promise you that. You know, and, you know, tomorrow's a new, brand new day. All right, let's look for something better for tomorrow, okay? Yeah. Buddy, I think you make sure you give Chase my information. Uh, I love I definitely, for, I'll pass it along. I love awesome. for Thank you so down. much. I love for you to come down. Yeah, I'd love for you to come down. And, uh, just like I told him while ago, what a beautiful kid, but look at you, man. You got that cut song. I'm going to the prom tonight. I'm going to the prom tonight. Right right after the interview. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, no, you, no, buddy. You look wonderful. And and that just shows me how much Thank you. You, you love the business too. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, absolutely. Bye, buddy. Thank you. Bye, -bye. Awesome. All right. Thank you, Ricky. Bye. Bye. Have a wonderful uh, thank night, you, Chase. Man. I'll be looking forward yeah. to seeing you. Thanks, man. Absolutely. Uh, bye. Amazing. Thank you. Bless it, Daddy. Book and Wooka Man feel good. I tell my people and my brothers and sisters, don't you dare, don't you dare miss online. Rewind, recap, relive. Oh, yeah.